Hey guys, in this video, we're going to cover all the things that you might want to know when dealing with HTTP requests in Angular. So the first thing that you need to do is bring in the HTTP client module into your application so that you can utilize it. So you can do this by going to source app and then go into app module if that's your main module. And then you just import it from the Angular common HTTP API. So everything that's dealing with HTTP comes from this. So you always want to use this angular slash common slash HTTP. Sometimes you'll see this from older versions of Angular, but you want to make sure you use um, this version here. And then of course, all modules, you always want to import them. So you add that down here. Once you do that, then you can start using HTTP client inside of your application. So I have the service here, and this is where I'm going to be making all of my HTTP requests. So again, like I was saying, you can import everything from that Angular common. So Angular common and then HTTP. So you want to import the HTTP client. Oops. Then you can inject it here as a dependency. So I'm going to create a method here called get all posts. And so now I can say return this dot, this dot HTTP and then the method that you want to use. So my method is going to be a get request and then the URL string that you want to reach. So I have some sample data here and then that's it. So now in a component, I'm going to bring in that service, which I've already done here. And then I'm going to call that um, that endpoint. So I can say this dot app service dot get all post, and then you want to subscribe to it, and that's going to emit the data out for you. So let's take a look at what that looks like. You'll see here calls the request, and then I get an array of data. Let me minimize this a bit, and you'll see that it's just basically an array of a lot of posts. So whenever you're using the HTTP client, it translates this data into um, JSON by default, but sometimes you need different type of data, right? So let me give you an example. I have a file here in my assets folder called hello world.txt, which is just a text file with some random data in it. Um, so you'll notice that if I try to get that file, um, I'll get an error, right? So let's say assets, hello world.txt. Then if I try to log that, you'll see I get an error here. And that's because it's trying to translate it as JSON. Um, so you need to tell it the type of file. And you can do that with options. So if you do comma and then curly braces, these, these are your options that you can set. And one of them is the response type. So you can say here, um, text. And so now when we go back, you'll see it and logs the file that we needed. All right, so that's how you can specify the data type. But like I said, JSON, the most common format is gonna be the default one that's used. Now going back to what I had before, I wanna show you something. Um, so back in the data, you'll see that each post has a body, an ID, a title, and a user ID, right? So let's say I wanna access that, right? So I'm gonna go back to the component here and I want to do say dash body right and you'll see that TS lint gives me an error here it tells me that it doesn't recognize body as a property and that's because I haven't specified what type of object this is so it just gives me a generic object which isn't necessarily going to have that property so whenever you're using angular or typescript by default you always want to use type checking um, but specifically in HTTP request, you need to tell it what type of object you're going to get back. So by default, what this returns is a observable stream of type object, right? You can import observable from the RxJS library, right? So just like that. And so this is the return um, default. So you need to replace this object with whatever it is that you have, right? So 
Um, you know, as an example, let's say I had an interface called cars and this car had a name of type string or something like that. Then here I could specify cars and that will let me know that this is returning cars. And then right here you need to cast it as well. So you just do cars like that. And that will let you know now that you're getting cars. So of course I'm not getting cars, I'm getting posts, but I'm just giving an example. So I'm going to bring in an interface that I've I've created and so I'm getting post array back. So now you'll notice that where you subscribe, um, when I hover over this data, it now says post array. So now I can do this, right? Like, let's say I want to go into the first item in that array. Now when I type in um, period, it gives me all the properties that belong because it knows um, what interface that is because I've defined it here, okay? So now I can say dot body and that will work just fine. And you'll see my body there. So you always just want to make sure that you're typecasting your, um, your requests. Now, sometimes you need access to, um, the full response, right? Let's say you need to access the headers or something else in the response. There's a way that you can get the full response. So you can do this um, by passing an option here called um, observe and then pass in response. Now, the problem with this is now it's not going to return um, my post array. And so what this is actually responding with now is the HTTP response entirely. And then the post will actually be attached to the body of that. Because basically what this does by default is it takes the response and just gives you the body back, which is the, you know, the data. But now we have the entire response. So you can fix this by either changing the type to be HTTP response of type post, or you can just map this in the way that you need it. So you can do that by saying dot pipe. And then you bring in the operator called map. So you need to bring that from the RxJS library. So import map from RxJS operators. And then you give it the response and then you just say response.body, okay? And that will give you the correct response back. And so I wanna show you what the full response looks like. So I'm gonna bring in tap, comes from the same place. And this time I'll just take the response and console log it. So then let's go back and look at this. And you see that the full response um, has the body, of course, which is our post, and then it has headers. It gives you the status back and a bunch in the URL and, and a lot of other things that might be useful for you. And so in, if you need that full response, then that's there for you. Now you may also need to handle errors, right? Let's say you wanna display error messages um, for all your requests, um, there's a way to do that. So let's say this URL is incorrect, right? I'm just going to add a bunch of letters here. You'll see now um, this request will fail. It basically gets a 404 not found, and then it logs the error object here. So what you can do is catch this error. So inside of RxJS operators, you want to bring in catch error. And then you can add that here. And I'm actually going to get rid of this here and get rid of this. And I'm not going to get the full response anymore. So now I can say catch error. And then this is going to take in um, some kind of function. So let's say I have a function here called handle error. It's going to take in the error that comes back from this which is an HTTP error response. And you wanna make sure you bring that in from the Angular common HTTP again. And for right now, I will just return um, null. So you wanna inside of here, you wanna go ahead and say this dot handle error. 
Now this is going to um, give you some errors because you need to return um, an observable here since that's what this is expecting. So what you can do is also bring in um, throw error. Um, actually that one comes from RxJS, I think. Yes. So then down here you can say return throw error and then you can either pass in a custom message or you can just pass in the same object. That's what I do. So I'm going to log the error here so we can see um, the error. And then down here, um, when you subscribe, um, basically what you want to do is inside of this curly brace, you can pass in a comma to grab that error. And um, so I'll say something. I'll say error occurred. Then I'm just going to log that error. So let me make sure I add that here. All right. And let's go back. So now you'll see that it, it basically logs the same exact thing. Um, but the difference is now I can handle this error, right? I can show error messages here, right? So let's say I have something like flash messages or maybe I have alerts, some kind of pop-up for the user. This gives me a way to handle errors for all my requests rather than having to add logic here all the time. So I can create this one function and then just apply it to all my HTTP requests, right? And later I'll show you an easier way to apply it to HTTP requests across your entire application rather than um, one at a time like this. But um, you wanna just make sure that you return an observable from here and then you can do with the error whatever you want. And so you're basically always going to get one of two types of errors here. You're either going to get a, um, an error back from the server. Um, you know, something went wrong with the request, um, like a 404 or something like that. Or you'll get a client request as well. This is basically like the, the JavaScript native error object. If something goes wrong with, um, you know, some of your code or logic in an error is thrown there. So you basically get one of those two types of errors here. So you can handle those as you wish. For example, you can access the different, um, you know, messages, the, the status, things like that, in case you want to display a message for users. So let's say I want to, um, and actually let me go back and I'm just going to console log this. And then the one over here, I'm gonna comment that out for right now. Now, let's say that um, I'm accessing an API that's known to fail every now and then, or sometimes the connection just won't work. Um, there's an easy way to retry this request before continuing on. So there's an RxJS operator called retry that'll basically retry this request as many times as you want it to. So I can say retry, um, let's say three times, okay? And so now you'll see that the request fails and then it retries once, fails again, tries again, try again, fails, and then try again, fail. Now, the problem with this is like, let's say I was showing an error message here, right? Let's say I was showing an error message there. Um, basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna show that message multiple times, right? But we only wanna show it one time. So you only wanna retry, um, you know, the specified times that you wanted and then show the error afterwards. So that's where the order of operations comes in. So you wanna make sure that your retry is actually before the error handling and basically what that'll do is it'll retry three times first and then it'll display whatever error handling that you added. So now you'll see that it tries once and then it retries three times and then afterwards it displays my error message. So going back to this, um, let's say I wanna attach headers to this, maybe some kind of authentication token or something like that. So the way you do that is from the same library, you wanna bring in um, HTTP params. And so it's very easy to create them. I'll just create a constant here called um, 
headers and oops actually i forgot to bring in http headers as well i'll show you how to do both of these they're basically the same way so new http headers and i'm going to create one called i don't know name david and so then over here in the options which i showed you before you just pass in headers then you give it those headers, right? So now you'll see whenever I make that request, so I'm going to go to my network tab, go to my post. You'll see here in the headers, we have the, um, whoops, that's the response. See right here, that is the header that I attached to it. So then I'll also, I'll also show you how to attach um, params. So you create it the same way, params equals new HTTP params. For this one, um, I'll do append um, age 100. So now I can say params, params. Right, and so you'll see now in the request, that we have those URL params like that. Okay. Now, one thing I want to point out is that these objects are immutable. Um, so what that means is, let me show you what happens. So let's say later on, I have some logic and I want to add more params to this, right? So I say params dot append, and then I say um, house blue. Okay. And then I go back, you'll see that it still has my original params. It doesn't have the additional ones that I just added. So the reason for that is because this is immutable, so you can't do it this way. So what you have to do is you have to, um, first I'm gonna make this let, and so I'll say params equals params.append, right? So basically it uses the original ones and then it appends it in a new object. So now you'll see that we have the both of the parameters now. You see the first one there and then the second one here. So that's just a, a mistake that a lot of times it's very easy to make. Um, and same thing with the headers, you wanna make sure that you treat it as an immutable object. Now the last thing I'm gonna show you is, let's say that I want to have a, a global error service, right? I don't wanna have I don't want to have to add this to all my requests and do catch error for all of them. There's a way to attach this to all of your requests. Same thing like these headers, right? Let's say I don't want to create the headers every time I make a request. There's a way to attach the headers globally to all your requests. So the first thing you want to do is create a service. I've named my service um, app interceptor service, right? Just a regular service, nothing fancy. Um, so what you want to do is take that service and go into your module and you want to add a provider down here. So I'm just going to create an object and say provide. And then here you want to pass in HTTP interceptors, which comes again from that common library. And then below that you want to say use class and then give it that service that, that you created. And then below that, just say multi-true. Okay, so that's gonna allow you to, to use your interceptor anywhere. And so, so the way you do that now, I'm gonna actually comment all of this out. And I'm also going to get rid of this. So then back in the interceptor, what you need to do is implement the interface HTTP interceptor. And that comes from common, of course. And so now you need to add a method here. So I'm just gonna go to the definition of this interface and just copy the, the method over, right? Or if you don't wanna do that, you can just add intercept like that. That'll work as well. 
Um, but I like to copy it so that I can get all of my definitions in here. So every, every one of these HTTP requests, you can import that from common HTTP handler, and then observable of course comes from RxJS. And so basically what you need to do is the request is going to be the, of course, the incoming HTTP request and whatever you want to do with it, right? So if I want to attach headers, I can do that. Um, and then afterwards you'll say next handle and then give it the request, right? And I think I need to do return on that. Yes. So you see, as of now, um, everything is fine. You'll see, I don't have, I don't have the headers that I created before. So I'm going to go in here and create my headers. Say authorization, David Acosta. So anytime you need to modify the request, what you need to do is clone it, right? So I'll say cons clone equals request.clone. And then I'll say headers equals my headers from above. And so now inside of this next handle, you pass it the clone instead, right? So now you'll see that my request here has my headers as I needed it to. All right, and so for intercepting the errors, there's another way to do it as well. Um, you can, you can at the end of this here, right, because this is an observable, you can do just like we did before where we did pipe and then catch error. And then you can basically do the exact same thing. So I'm going to copy this from there and I'll just paste it somewhere in here. And then I'll just say this dot handle error. Right. And then I'm just purposely going to make this fail to make sure this works. Right, and you'll see that it logs the error there, and that comes from my interceptor here, right? So this is where you would add the logic if you wanted to handle, um, if you wanted to handle that error at a global level, right? So even even though I don't have a catch error here, it's still catching it because I've injected this interceptor to all my HTTP requests.